सुप्रभातम सुस्वागत ज्ञान योग इज नॉट मियरली अंडरस्टैंडिंग द टूल्स इट हैज टू बी लिव श्रोत्रिय ब्रह्मनिष्ठम रिसेट यू मस्ट नो बाय द इंटेलेक्ट बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग देन यू मस्ट ब्रिंग अबाउट द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन to live to see i that the key is so i was telling how even an unschooled boy like ramana maharshi reached the great heights of the sita pragyatva nana get it stabilized is sita pragna what the characteristic of that that is able to stay in that silence as long as he wants and when he has to be in action he will be the most efficient in action when there is a responsibility and there is a duty then he will discharge all things maintaining that inner gnana sthiti yogastha kur karmani said that to tune to that inner sun Attuned to the dance theory, you do all activities. So in the schematic, you can see that getting the dance as a culmination of shravana, manana, nididhyasana is the first step. So it expands our vision. Then this dance theory has to be stabilized, and when this is done, then the knowledge starts coming up. And all knowledge is enshrined in the Kriyana Maya Kosha, in the Tananda Maya Kosha. Therefore, any knowledge that you want, you just tune yourself, and then the Kriyana is going to come to you. And that is the new modernity of getting that knowledge in our ancient scriptures. Now, what you do? You only read the books and try to memorize that and get the knowledge. Whereas Our ancient seers found a better way, a more effective way of getting at the knowledge. That is, say that science. Then, whatever knowledge you want, just get it from yourself. Just like opening a pen, saying, "Okay, I am getting the knowledge." Just like googling any information that you want. That is the infinite Google, you can say. And where is the proof for such a thing? Ramana Maharshi, he was established in the state of Pune, and great Ganapati Mahamuni, great Sanskrit scholar, Upanishad professor, and he was a top post in the university. He was coming and sitting at the feet of Ramana Maharshi and asking his doubts about the Upanishads. Nisha was a Upanishad, there is a particular shloka. He said, Avidyaya Amrutyam Tirtva, Vidyaya Amrutam Ashtute, he said. He was not understanding that meaning of that. What is the secret and shine in that? How is it possible? So he went and asked Ramana Maharshi, can you please explain? Ramana Maharshi was unschooled. He never knew any Sanskrit. He never studied any Upanishad. But he explained it with such fine secrets, bringing out that when he was thirty. So that the essence, kintum vignatum, sarvam vignatum, bhavati di, is said in the Upanishads. So such people were able to see what is happening in the future, what happened in the past. Everything they can see, that known as the trikalakna. There is a great generalist. Paul Brunton. He came from England. He was very interested in spirituality, and he was searching such great masters in Himalayan peaks. He went around various places, and he was searching for such a person whom he can get all his answer for the questions that he had. He went on searching and searching. But nobody could answer his questions. He was so brilliant and wonderful, brilliant intellect. 
nobody could answer him. So he back and wrote his first book, Search in the Secret Himalayas. He was not satisfied. And it became a very popular book. Then he came back again, again searching such people who can answer him. Then somebody told, okay, you have such many people here. Why don't you go to Tiruvannamurai? There is one person called Ramana Maharishi. Probably he can answer him. So he was very sincere, came all the way from Himalayas down to Tamil Nadu, Tiruvannamurai, and went to the ashram and asked manager, Sir, I want an appointment with Ramana Maharishi. Manager says, there is no need, it's very simple, Ramana. Tomorrow morning you come, we have a nice uh, thing like Maitri Melan. Everybody will come for their meditation. You also come and sit, after that you can talk to him. No, no need for appointment and all this thing. It's not such a formal thing. So, I was very happy. So, in the evening he prepared his all questions. How are you going to ask this first question? If you answer like this, you will ask this question, this question, this question, this question, and he will do. Suppose he answers this way. Then I will ask this question, this question, this question, this question, and he will be gone. Let me see how he is going to answer. Everything is prepared. Just like a chess player, a top chess player, he did everything. And in the morning, not up early, because 7 o'clock he has to go there, and again he remembered all the things, noted down some important points so that he will not forget, and comes, and all people were sitting in deep meditation. Ramana was sitting there in the deep silence, and he also came and sat and went on remembering first question, this question, question, this question, this question, this, 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 everything he went on remembering so that he should not forget, no, when he asked. And 15 minutes by the time he was all full with these questions, but still meditation was going on half an hour and 45 minutes. One hour, slowly he started feeling something very serene. And his mind started slowing down. And his innovative, sharp, brilliant mind started calming down, calming down. And one and a half hours, he started feeling a serene silence inside. And two hours, he started feeling such a blissful experience. He was able to feel the blissful awareness of Ramana Maharshi and spreading the whole area. You know. And two and a half hours, 9.30, you know, everybody came out and left. And Ramana sees a new person, is come and Bob Brenton goes there. What, what is the question you have? No question, sir. All questions dissolve. <laughs> when you go into the deep silence, the questions will not answer, the questions will be dissolved. No. Chidyante sarva samshaya, kshiyante jasya karmani. That's what's going to happen. Therefore, this is the thing that we have to get at. So, it is not mere understanding by the intellect, but allowing the mind to go into the deep silence, into the Pandamai portion and experience that. And as you get that knowledge, then you have a total transformation that takes place. A cognition and transformation occurs. Your wrong knowledge will go away, the right knowledge is going to come. You know? Normally we all have wrong knowledge. And because of the wrong knowledge, many of the problems and challenges come in our life. So you should get at the right knowledge. So how to use that? How to bring that into our application? In the research that we have done here. So in our Aravya Dhamma, many, many persons come, the patients, we don't call them patients, we call yoga therapy participants, we call. No? And when they come, they have such a wrong knowledge. We have to correct that. No? So we had one of the persons in Bangalore, she had intense asthma, bronchial asthma. At the age of 26, she got asthma. She was now 48 years and suffering and suffering and suffering. He's taking inhalers continuously almost. Often oxygen is being put. All oh, that was going on. No. And in spite of that, he was not getting. Then 
one day she came to our Dr. Nagaratna, she was contending in Chamraj Pet in her Sohrada Parikali and she told Doctor, somehow I feel this bronchial asthma is very psychological. What do you say? Dr. Nagaratna said, how can you say this? Actually in asthma, your bronchus gets constricted and there is an obstruction to the airway passage. Therefore, it's called obstructive lung disease. It's called. So, why is it psychological? Oh, no, doctor, I don't understand that. But somehow I feel it's psychological. Why? See, I have started observing myself. Over the last few days, almost about two months, I found I will get this bronchial attack only when I am in my house with my husband. <laughs> so I have thought of a trick now. As soon as I get this bronchial attack, I will simply leave the house and go to my father's house. There is a Janagar 10 block, Janagar 5 block. Only 2 km. Then I become all right. You know? Don't you think it is psychological? Nagarata, yo, you have a lot of problem with your husband. I said, whatever I say, he will not agree. Whatever he says, I don't agree. Unless we quarrel cats and dogs. <laughs> okay, you want to overcome, come for our camp, from Karatma camp. And she came and she heard the lectures and she went on improving wonderfully well. Within five days, her inhaler started coming down, number of attacks almost stopped, and within ten days, no attack at all. Last four days of the camp. No attack at all. And only once he was taking in here. So in the concluding ceremony, valedictory function, her husband came and she told Dr. Nagaratna what a miracle you have done. You know, she was consulting all the medical experts in the country, in the world, and she took so much of medicine. Still she was getting attacks, attack, attack she was getting, she was suffering, suffering. Within 14 days, you have completely cured her. Her asthma for 20 years you have cured. What a miracle you have done. How did you do that? He asked. And Nagarata told, why don't you talk to her? How she was able to do that? Then she looked at him and told, one lecture by her, that all transformed. What is the lecture? No. That day Nagarata started the lecture. All of you are here asthma, suffering from bronchial asthma, and we are here, 74 people who are here in this camp. And most of you think the bronchial asthma that you are having is due to pollution outside. Bangalore has become very polluted, air is very polluted. And in the winter season, you get the parthenium weeds. The weeds will come and it will go into your nose and you get the suffering and you get bronchial asthma. Right? Everybody agrees? Everybody raise their hands. Then she is totally wrong. No. If this were true, then how many people in Bangalore suffer from bronchial asthma? Only 4.5%. You know. Why the remaining 95.5% of the people do not get asthma? What does the medical world tell us? <coughs> medical world tells in all these asthmatics, they have got a problem in their respiratory system. That's called non-specific bronchial hyperreactivity. That means your bronchus is highly sensitized, over sensitivity of the bronchus. A little dust comes, immediately it will constrict. In normal people, you must have a tremendous amount of dust and the thickness comes, bronchus is slowly it will constrict. No. If 100 units bring that little thing in asthmatic, even 0.1% of the dust will make it constrict. Why? Your bronchus is over -sensitive. And therefore, what is to be done? Cleaning outside will not solve the problem. Very good started doing the parthenium weeds, started they removing and dust started removing, but it did not happen. You know. So what is to be done? You have to reduce your over sensitivity. You know. So the over sensitivity bronchus has to be desensitized. That is the solution. She said, this is what completely changed me. So always I thought, you are wrong. 
you are telling Prahlad Prim. That's why I almost always say, I am right, you are wrong. I am right, you are wrong. And all my ask why do to you, I was thinking. No? I thought, maybe I am wrong. Then I started looking to myself. And I started changing. Why should I think always you are wrong and I am right? Maybe I am also wrong. Then I started thinking in that direction. And instead of quarreling, slowly I started, okay, let me see, let me tolerate him like this. And in a few days, then I found that your ways of doing things are even better than mine. You know? Each person has his own way of doing the work. You are doing it this way, I am doing it this way. Why do you think this should be correct, this should be wrong? Then I started analyzing. Many times, you were right, your path was better than me. <coughs> then I started accepting you. This has quarreled. It has been posing myself. I started accepting. Then, as days passed, you know, I found most of the times, 80% you are right, 20% only I am right. You know? Therefore, I started developing respect for you. Then, all my asthma went away. This is the cognition and transformation that can bring about the change. You know? And her husband was thrilled. I know, doctor, last 10 days she has not quarreled me at all. You know? <laughs> and I tried to provoke her to become angry and quarrel with me. You know? But she did not become angry. She did not quarrel with me. You know? That is the power of jnana, the right understanding of this thing. And therefore, he said, I also now should change. I was thinking my wife is always wrong. I was thinking I was right. I also should change. So both of them kept our yoga instructor course from and became yoga instructors. Then they did yoga therapy instructor course and became wonderful yoga therapist in Bangalore. And she had transformed hundreds of asthmatics in Bangalore. Because she said, I had the experience of 25 years. And now you see, within 15 days, my asthma is gone. No medicine, no attack. And growing wonderfully well. This is the power of Gnana. This is how we have to apply the Gnana into our day-to-day -day life. You know? Thinking that everything is wrong because of someone else. My asthma, my depression, my problems are all due to outside. Because of my, because of husband, because of children, because of the outside demanding situation out of the country, because of the other people hitting me. We think that it's all, you know, it's because somebody else, you know. But the fact is, it's all due to us. So, Swadhyaya. Nana says, you look inside. All the problems are inside. It is not outside. Once you change, then it will happen. What is needed for your normalization? You have to change yourself. That is the secret that Nana Yoga gives us. Therefore, what we have to do, if I got depression, I must understand there is something wrong happening here. You know, what is that imbalance that is taking place? And Nana says, it is the Adhi. In the Manumaya Kosha, you have done something against what is right. And that the root cause for the thing becoming a Vyadhi. So I have to correct that notion. So the Manomaya Kosha having the Adhi has to be corrected by the Vignanamaya Kosha power, power of the right understanding. This is how the Gnana Yoga is not just philosophy. It to be kept in the archive and then read only by the top intellectuals and philosophers. This is what we see in philosophy learning abroad. Harvard University, they have had a wonderful philosophy department. And what they do, they all put this knowledge of the Vedanta, of the philosophy, in very high strung English. Normal people cannot understand. No. All technical words, technical words. And these people are suffering and suffering from various things. No. Why? They have not brought this into practice. Therefore, what is emphasized in Jnana is the Paravidya, not the Aparavidya. Aparavidya is only understanding, intellectual understanding. What? It is necessary understanding. But you have to bring it to your practice. Therefore, theory and practice are both important. That's why I emphasize here, more practice is needed than theory. So I understand what is to be the goal of asana, stira, chira, sukha. And you must get into that state of complete samadhi. Even through asanas, you can reach that highest as we put forth. So you have to start working on that. 
when you are in nice shavasana in the end, your mind should become calm and calm and become completely silent. And you must get an experience of that wonderful blissful awareness. How Patanjali says, Ananta Samapati, tune your mind to the all perhaps expansive silence and lie down, that thing, and you get this thing. And this is how we have to grow. The jnana got to be brought into application. And the stresses will all start reducing and we go into the deeper and deeper dimension. So let us contemplate on this thought. Sit with the eyes closed. Relax all parts of the body from toes to head. Beautiful smile on the face. Take a deep breath and slowly breathe out. Now look at the mind. Thoughts are coming and thoughts are going. As you slow down the breath, the thoughts also slow down. You can see a thought comes up and vanishes. Another thought comes, vanishes. Recognize the gap between the two thoughts. The gap is silence. Clearly you can see a thought, silence, thought, silence. <coughs> Go a little deeper to see that silence has been there all, all the time. It was there, it is there and it will be there the silence. And in that vast field of silence, the thoughts come and go, come and go, come and go. Just as clouds come and go in the vast sky. Thoughts are like waves in the chitta akasha, akasha of the mind. Silence is a very, very all pervasive, infinite. That's what then you call it, ananta. Having no end, infinite, spread everywhere. That is a state of shanti, peace, tripta siddhi, ananda siddhi. Silence is bliss. Bliss is peace. So that is our causal state, Ananda Bhai Kosha. Where all our thoughts, emotions, and the body also emerge. So let us tune ourselves to that infinite silence in the deeper layers of the memory. And be blissful all the time inside. Let us spread the fragrance of that bliss everywhere throughout the day. Come to Namaskar Mudra.